Good afternoon. I'm uh, Carlene Tyler, Director of Alumni and Constituent Relations at the college. I see a lot of familiar faces, but today I'm very pleased that Michaela Groplocker has joined us. Um, she teaches at the college, and I'm pretty sure that many of you are familiar with her work. Um, painter, sculptor, what else? Artist, <laughs> in general. And today um, she has a presentation that she calls Noble Souls. So, right now let's turn our attention to Michaela for Noble Souls. Thank you. So, a few little oopsies uh, before I start and all those disclaimers. Um, I, I brought you some photographs on a disk on an external hard drive and it, it, it doesn't communicate with the computer here so no photographs you have to look at me I'm sorry <laughs> um, but I brought two of my girls with me so don't look at me look at them and <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that and the, the photographs that I brought, there are not very many because I didn't want to overwhelm you, but they are just from other pieces of work I did. So you may not miss a whole lot, really. <laughs> um, well, you know my name. You know, many of you know me because I've lived, I used to live in McPherson. I now live in Lindsborg, but the nice thing is that I, I work at McPherson College and I absolutely love it. I never thought I would teach in my life. My father always wanted me to be a teacher or a secretary or a nurse. So those were the three choices and I didn't want to be neither, none of those. So I wanted to be an artist and um, my father decided you cannot be an artist. That's the worst thing in the world. Do something real. Well, so I became a physical therapist and I worked as a PT for quite some years and, you know, long story and all that, I don't want to bore you. Um, I am an accidental professor, really, and I'm an artist. Um, and when I, with my students, you know, when you have students in college in art, um, it's not exclusively about making work. You also want, as a teacher, you want them to feel comfortable to be able to speak about art and in somewhat of an educated way. And many of them, I, I, you know, I like it or I don't like it. Well, it's not enough. So I start to make them talk about art by starting four sentences. And I would like to do the same with you and I invite you to, to speak because I don't want to speak the whole time. I just want you to help me a little bit. So the first sentence I start is, I see. And the students are invited, and you are the students now, to finish that sentence. So, so here are two of my pieces, and you can now finish the sentence. And if you are brave enough to speak out, say it, what you see. Beauty. Beauty? <laughs> I helped a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> he says, I see beauty. I see sparkle in her eyes. She's, he, she's like she's so alive. Thank you. She says, I see sparkle in her eyes. Her eyes means that there's a woman out here. There's a woman out here. Okay, so she sees sparkle in her eyes and she looks like she's alive. I see. Somebody sees something else? I see a change in texture. You see a change of texture. Mm, we are starting to be really technical here. Great observation skills is what I would say to my students. Yes. <laughs> I see character. You see character, yes. Experience. Experience. Mm -mm -mm. I see what? Wow, God, you are really seeing way deep. 
Anything else? You see something? Hope! Oh my god! I'm sorry, this is like so, I don't know how loud I speak. It sounds really loud. <laughs> Am I speaking too loud? No? Okay, it sounds like, oh my god. Okay, so I see, this is when I invite my students to observe, to see what, what is it, what is it, you know? What is it, what is it? It, it could be a painting that you see some wonderful colors or whatever, whatever you see. And so this is, you know, sculpture, obviously, and usually I invite the students to walk around because sculpture is something that is made to be seen in the round, and sometimes the back sides are better than the front sides, but you're going to see the front sides at the moment. So I see. The next thing, the next sentence is, starts with, I think. After you observed, as the viewer, the viewer, you know, this is when you really, at first you look, hopefully. Then you start to react to it. I think this is, I think, I think. I think she has had a happy life. This one, yeah. I think she really did. I'll tell you about her in a minute. You're right. I think. Are you thinking? I think the artist is really talented. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I paid her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think. Are you thinking? Yes. It's very real. She says, very realistic looking. I think, yeah, I think. This is my thing. As an artist, we have, you know, when you go to a museum and you look at the work in a museum or in an exhibit, you are inundated with visual information. And so our mind gets tired easily. And as an artist, we have only about two seconds to grab somebody's attention or to lose it. Because that's, the, you know, they do studies about everything. And so they have to start to so two seconds. So my, the way I grab your attention is with the realism. There is some realism at first. It's so real, the faces or the hands look so real that it's like it, start, it startles people. And so it's like, oh my God, I thought this is a real person. And that two seconds is my entrance as an artist. It's like, I have you. And then I have you, those one, two. And then you start to look, it's kind of like, oh my God. Oh my God, why is she looking at? Oh, she looks over here. Or you, you know, I, and then you start looking at the hands, and then you follow, your eye follows, and this goes all quick, 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 quick. But I have your attention. Two seconds, and then I grab you. And then your mind starts to work. I wonder what she's talking about. And then people see, you know, usually people point out no hair. I'll tell you about this in a minute. But so that's like my two seconds, okay? So like here, you know, again, she's kind of friendly and she sparkles and you know, she's like, and so you look in her face and then it's kind of like, well, what is this? What is this about, you know? So I think, I, what is this about, I think? I wonder. No? I think I'm already caught up in this experience this afternoon more than I thought I would be. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I so. Know, I know you're saying something about her, but I'm the one behind you. Not to be judgmental, but I, I'm sure she's been through a lot in her life, but she seems so humbling. You know, I am a little over halfway there. Well, that was two or, and I think that all of us 
on our way are going through a lot. And so, I don't know, I mean, some may go through more than others, I don't know, but I think that all of us are like, no? Some people, I don't think some people will have. She, so, I don't know, I don't know, I think so. Okay, I see, I think, I feel. Now you come. Tell me what you feel. This is, you know, you have to know that usually when I speak to students, I speak to young people. I speak to high school students, and they're at first like, oh, oh my God, is she sick? And I said, no, she isn't sick. So, you know, so I feel, are you feeling something? You already felt a lot when you saw things. You saw things in a completely different way than the students do, you know. The students look on the outside. And when you told me things like hope, or long, you know, long life, or beauty, and that kind of stuff. So you, you already, you, you're seeing on a completely different level. So, but now you can feel, you know, whatever, depth. I feel <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> I don't know. I feel uh, whatever her life may have been, she has found some happiness in old age. Yeah, She's, I, tell, I will tell her a story. You are so right. So, yeah. So, you know, all those feelings, whatever we see. The thing, of course, what we see, what we feel, has to do with our own history, whatever we experienced in our own life. So you, it's, it, but this is very personal. And so for me, I need you to, to complete my work, so to speak. I make something because whatever I, you know, whatever I think or feel or I wanna do, but that's only me. And then I put it out for you to see, and you as the viewer, you complete my piece with your reaction, with your feeling, with your thoughts. You complete the art. You are really important as a viewer to finish, to complete the work of art. And the last sentence I ask my students to finish usually is, I wish. Are you wishing something? I don't think she thinks of herself as so. old. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, I love it. You know? She said, I don't think that this person thinks of herself as old. And she didn't. I will tell you the story. Okay. I, I wish that when I'm that old, that I feel that young at heart. <laughs> I think you can, you, can, you can work on that. I try to tell my students that we have to work on this starting early on, I think. I don't know, but, but that's what, yeah. Usually I bring this piece with me because this is so fragile with her hands. This stuff is fragile, it's made out of clay. Um, the top piece is made out of clay, then underneath is a structure, she stands on some structure, and then this piece is just painted, I painted the muslin, just a piece of muslin, and, and so, um, yeah. So this is Lola, and this is Linda. They are, they were, residents of another nursing home. Um, I am, how should I tell you this? Um, when, when I started to, you know, I'm a maker. I want to make things. This is just like my big thing. From day one, when I think back, when I was a little kid, I wanted to make things. But I'm also a thinker. And so somehow this, 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 this I think, those two um, characteristics are the prerequisites of an artist. You have to think and you have to be willing to make and then you make it in a way, hopefully, that 
the viewer can see what you wanted them to see. If they don't, well then I, I have to adjust because there's some message here. And my message is I love old people and I think that old people are enormously important for society and for the young people. So for me, this is like, that's my big thing in a nutshell. So, and um, so as I was starting to make things, especially when you make things out of clay, you know, first you make little stuff and you learn to throw on the wheel and you make pots and you make plates and this stuff and that stuff. And, and it's stuff, and some of it is nice, and some of it is not nice, and people use it and break it, and buy it for a little money, and you know that kind of stuff, it's stuff! And I don't like stuff. There is so much stuff in this world, and I do produce stuff, still. But so I wanted to find something that would make satisfy me as the maker, but also something that does more than just making stuff. So, or decorate the wall or that kind of, I mean, you know, I'm not against this, but it's just for me. So, and as I was, you know, we are talking here a long time of making things, and I'm trying to just tell you this in, in a few minutes. So I've, I started to sculpt busts of people and whoever I knew, just people I knew, neighbors, my family, what, whoever. And well, and I thought they were pretty good and then you submit them to competitions and you, well, get rejected and rejected and rejected. And it's kind of like, well, and then one time I made a piece of an old woman. And that piece won first prize in a big national show. And I thought, wow, I mean, I wonder why she and why not that, okay? And so I thought, you know what? That the expression, the expressiveness, the wrinkles, this wonderful life experience, that's what grabbed people. And so I just kept going with that. And so eventually, when I went to graduate school, I had to make big work and important work and all this blah, blah, blah. And so I thought, you know, if I would start to sculpt in the nursing home and ask residents of the nursing home to be my models, maybe you know, we would have some talking, some exchange, some contribution from them. And, and so I started, I was nervous. I mean, because you have to do it in public, you know? And then it's kind of like, oh my God, if this doesn't turn out, then things break and things don't work, you know? So it's all this stuff. So it's kind of like, this is crazy, you know? In a way, it's kind of a little crazy. Plus, I did it in Linzburg, and it's, you know, a tiny town, for me, where I come from, it's a tiny town at the end of the world with people who are not show off at all. And, it's kind of, and here comes this person with an accent who says, would you be my model? Do you mind let having me take photographs of you in your underwear? And they think, she's crazy. She's sort of, you know, she's crazy. But, you know, eventually they did. And so, um, so here, I was working on a piece, and I could show you if it would work, but it doesn't. So, but it was kind of a nice piece, and so people walk by every day when they go to lunch, and then when they come back, and they kind of look from a distance. And so here was Lola, but I didn't know who she was. She was just a little woman, little woman. And here she would be dressed up every day, like dressed up, and she would just to lunch and then like 45 minutes later here she comes Lola. Hello, she says hello and then she would just and she would never speak and and I've been wanting to make a dancer I wanted to make a dancer an old woman 
in a tutu. That was my thing. I've just been wanting to make that. Why can't an old woman be a tutu? Uh, you know, wearing a tutu. So, so one day I, I asked her. I just, you know, when she was walking by, I was waiting for her, I was ready. And uh, I said, you know, Lola, you, you know, the, I've been wanting to make this dancer. Would you like to be my model? And she looked at me and she said, how did you know I've always wanted to be a dancer? I said, I have no idea, but you just, you know, you just, it just kind of felt right. Well, long story short, we started to work. Of course, she told, she had to call her family. I had no idea, of course, this is all behind the scenes. But down the road, they told me, she called like the whole family. And, and because they were thinking like, maybe I'm like a salesperson, you know, a daughter to a salesperson. I'm just trying to pull something on her, you know. And so, but you know, so we did that girl in the tutu. And here she was, and she just was wonderful. And she sat with me and she, she was so proud of it, and she just um, told me that she had only come about two months prior to the nursing home, and it was a very hard experience for her, and she didn't know anybody because she wasn't from Lindsberg. I had no idea. I did not know the person. I have no idea because I am not from Lindsberg. I had no idea. So, so she was just, and she started to blossom. And she was so happy. And so she, we made this piece and she told me what color she wanted this to be and whatnot. And so I, it was just kind of great. And <laughs> Larry Hattiburg came and we were on TV and I mean all kinds of stuff. And eventually the piece was finished and I submitted it to shows and the, the piece was, you know, sent to shows and whenever the piece got into a show and it was kind of close, the nursing home drove the real Lola to the clay Lola in the exhibit. So they made it like a day and some other people came along and I mean it was just like all this stuff and the newspaper wrote about it and the Lola was in the newspaper. And so, you know, she clipped it all out. I had no idea. So she clipped it all out and people took photographs of her and she kept them all. And she had in her room the whole wall full with stuff eventually. And so, well, and then the big day for me came when I was informed that the piece was purchased by a museum. And I was thrilled, of course, as an artist, what? You know, it's like the best thing in the world. A museum, like a real big, serious museum, buys your piece. And so I come to Lola and I tell her that, and she was heartbroken. So she said, so you are telling me that she isn't coming back ever again? And I said, yeah. I can never talk to her again. You know, she said, I've always talked to her because I kept the piece up in a nursing home. So she said, you know, oh my God. So she made me feel so bad. So I had this moment, you know, and I was just thinking I can tell her. And, and she just, oh my God. So I felt so bad and I thought, what am I going to do? So, and then, you know, she was an old lady and she had some health issues and this and that. And so one day I was working on another piece in the nursing home. And so she comes by and I said, Lola, what, what would you think if we would just make another piece? And she was just like, the light went on. And it's like, you mean? Another danger, she said. And I thought, oh God. And so I said, well, let's talk about it tomorrow. I just, you know, I'm, I'm just like crumbling inside of me, thinking, what did I do? And so, well, next day comes and she comes by again and she was just blossoming again. And she said, you know? And she was leaning at my table and she said, I was thinking about what you said yesterday. And um, I 
was thinking this time I should be in a blue gown and this time I should be at the presidential ball. And I'm just like, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, in a way I was so happy because I want people to be happy about the work. And I was just like, how am I going to do this? So, so we took photographs again and you know, we started again and we had a real great time. And, but then Lola, um, long story short, she, I, the piece was, the sculpting of the piece was finished, but it didn't have any color yet, nothing. It was just a bare clay and then Lola passed away. And so she had never, she never saw the piece finished. I have to tell you, oh, now let me see, let me see, what am I going to tell you now? Um, this is the thing, so as she and I were, were talking, you know, we sat through uh, all those sessions, and so she told me about her second husband's name was Arnie, and Arnie was the love of her life, and he had passed away some years before, and so she would always tell me about Arnie and you know this, Arnie this and Arnie that and what they did together and whatnot. And so I wanted her to dance with Arnie like forever. So I gave her this position that would kind of show when you hold on to somebody dancing. So the piece is called Lola Dancing with Arnie. And um, when she passed, um, I was informed that, you know, go to the funeral and this is something I don't like to do. And so, well, so I did. And here, you know, you get this, I don't know how you call this, that, what the program, the program book. And there's usually a picture of the person in the front or so. There was Lola in her pink tutu. My piece, Lola, was on the front. And I turn and I look and here is, in the funeral, <laughs> I just about died too. Um, <laughs> so there was the picture of Jesus and then there was a very large photograph of Lola in her tutu uh, and the coffin, and it was just all one big piece. She had it all planned out. The flowers were the same color as, the, as her tutu, and it was just like, I couldn't believe it. So I'm telling you this long story, because it's kind of funny, and it's, but it's so beautiful, because what some of you saw, she was so happy, she just was thrilled. She thought she was a star. She just had turned into a star. And one day she came up and she said, you know what? We did it. We did it, she said. And then she said, I know you did it, but you couldn't have done it without me, she said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's my story about Lola, who was one of the noble souls. Um, and this is how the story goes. What I'm trying to do, and that's why I brought Linda. When I talk to my students, um, Linda, when you look at Linda and when you look at, you know, what else, when you look at her, many people realize that this kind of looks like tree bark. And so, I did that on purpose. I like to compare people and trees. And so, envision me talking to young people, and I say, you know, a young tree, when you look at a young tree, young trees are very, they have smooth bark, they're very flexible, they're not well defined yet, they may not bloom yet, but then, you know, they, they bloom. It takes some years to start to bear fruit. And then as trees get older, they start to fill out. They start to get, you know, 
broader, wider, sturdier. It's kind of like people, and our, our skin starts to fall just like the bark in trees. And so I love to compare people and trees. The root system, as you grow older, I mean, you just grow roots. You grow roots, and the root system is strong, and, and you become a sturdy person. And, and some of those trees, not all of them, but some of those trees turn into magnificent old trees. And it's just like some of those people turn into magnificent old people. There is not a word for a young person. Magnificent is never a word for a young person, you know? Magnificent is only a word for an old person, for a just a, <clears throat> you know what I mean, you can feel it. Can't you feel it? Yes, you can. And then I said to the students, just imagine Thanksgiving and everybody comes to grandma's house because it's so great there, and it's warm, and it's cozy, and it's like the big tree that spread out the, the arms wide, and the branches wide, and everybody can huddle underneath and feels protected. And by that time, they all melt away. It's just like, yes, 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 they can feel it. You can feel it, how the students just really realize, you know, that, that the comparison and how wonderful it is to have those people in their lives. And so I just want you to know that I deeply, deeply believe this, and I deeply believe, you know, and this is just one little aspect of how wonderful it is to have the old people in our lives. And I, don't, I want you to know that you are so, so, so important. Because many think there is no fashion for us. There is no this for us. You know, no, nobody does anything for us anymore because we don't need to pay stuff anymore. Well, it's okay, it's okay. You are good for something completely different. And that's what it is, in my opinion. So, well, you have something in your pocket. My Not bag. in your pocket, in your, in your, bag. In your bag. Here, I don't. I don't. I, this is completely unexpected. I, ha, I don't know who she is. We never met before. I don't know. She said, "I have your bust in my bag," and I said, "You really do? <laughs> no wonder it's not here where it's supposed to be." Who is this? Oh. You know, when I moved away from McPherson, I moved because my husband had died and the house was big and I couldn't pay for it. Oh, okay, now I know who she is. Uh, she, but there was a hand with it. You didn't get that hand. Okay, I'll tell you the story. Oh, so I moved away and I had all this stuff. Now I live in a house, it's like this big. So I had to get rid of my stuff, and uh, a lot of my stuff. Huh? And so this is a piece that I had made before, and so she, this is a piece, <laughs> um, she does this. Mm. And so <laughs> this is a friend of mine. This is at the time before I did older people. Um, and so she, this piece includes actually, there was a hand and that a male, a man's hand, and the man's hand, just this long, held up a ring. And the ring, it's kind of like when the guy proposes, but it didn't have a diamond, it had a tiny little lemon. And it's kind of like, I have to tell you that I was not the very happy wife. And so I probably, I probably projected that into, I just accepted a lemon a long time ago, okay? And so, and so here I had my, <laughs> 
I'm just being honest, like usual, you know, people are going to say, oh my God, I don't know her, I don't know who she is, it's like, oh my God, oh God, okay. So, so I have this friend who went through a similar experience and I asked her to, to recall this and to not accept the ring and so she kind of like, mm did this and so I made her like that and then I gave her some yellow and so some dots that reminded of the lemon so it's kind of like this no thank you I've done that I know better now I'm sorry I love Maine but not all of them <laughs> I do <laughs> so that's what this piece is about so you can, I don't no, have a title, this, but this she, the lady didn't know. No, my name's Barbara Bickford, and I went to the sale for all this stuff. You know, I couldn't bear to go, yeah. I mean, oh God, so. And ironically, I was telling her that in so many ways, and I couldn't put my finger on it, it reminded me of my mom. She was at Bethany Homes, and she passed away, blah, blah, blah. And um, my father was the one that put that lemon in her. Like that. She, she, she didn't get to do what you did. She just get away from him. But she put up with me all those years. And even when we had our 50th anniversary, I said, Come on, Mom, you going to do this? She goes, I'll give you She goes, What are you going to give me? I said, A purple ribbon? I, I don't know. But she went. But that's, is it, is that ironic that she just put up with me? You know, maybe we should just put the purple ribbon on her, like the beginning of a purple ribbon. So. And, you know, you know, maybe that's. <laughs> I'm telling you, that, that's so to well. Me. Here you go, but that's the story of this piece. So I had no idea. What well, watch that those arms, please, because she just doesn't move. She only breaks. And then <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. So, so this is this is it. This is it. So um, if you have questions, I would be glad to answer. She looks sad. Well, you know, in a way, she isn't really, I have to bring her, she isn't, she doesn't really look sad, I think. When you look at her, um, she looks kind of a, a little somber, a little, she looks back into her life, really. The reason why she appears to be sad is because she's very pale. And she has no hair. And so, but really when you look in her face, and you know, that's the thing, she, they can't turn. They look so real, but by golly, they don't move, you know? And so, um, I just have to put it. Uh, what I wanted to really speak in this piece about, and so she kind of, she looks at that nest here. There's a nest, for those of you, that nest one day fell out of a tree, there <laughs> was a thunderstorm, and, and this, it's not beautiful anymore, but it used to be this gorgeous nest, and I found it and I thought, oh my God, I'm going to use this in one of my pieces. And so, and then I made Linda, and she talks about confinement and the way she's turned, and so she looked, you know, kind of, yeah, a little sad, maybe a little somber, even though the face isn't very sad, I think, but the whole, the, the gesture is kind of. Um, and then, you know, I had this nest, and here is this person who turns into a tree, or a tree turns into a person, whatever you want to see. And then I thought, okay, well, if I, you know, use a branch and the nest, and I have two eggs in the nest, one is, and they're clay. This is a, you know, just an egg that's not hatched. And here's an egg that's hatched. And then here is a little bird with a human face. And so, so I bring that to the students and they have to look at this whole thing and the bird and Linda, they look at each other, and well, come on, birdie. And so then I ask the students, so what are you thinking? 
You know, because again, we are seeing, first we see, and then so as they walk around, they do see an egg. Well, I say there's only one egg. Well, one is hatched and one is whole. Okay, good. And, and so, well, why? Why do you think this is, I say? And what do you think the students say? Ah, the one they see there's a baby, yeah. You mean the bird? Or the It's symbolic of her baby. The bird? Mm-hmm. The bird. The bird. The bird is symbolic of her baby. Could be. The so you know there's so many things. It's like what I see doesn't have to be what you see. But the students say exactly that could be a child that she had. Another student says, well, it could really be like, she's looking back at the past and she's looking at herself when she was a young bird, you know, ready to fly. Uh, Somebody else says, well, I see an egg that's hatched and I see one egg that isn't hatched. So maybe that was a child that she lost, says, huh? Oh, I wish she had. Ah, and then I say, well, eggs don't really only speak about fertility. They also speak about the potential in us. It's kind of like, you know, we, we could have done things and we didn't. So it's that egg that never hatched. And so I can say to the students, so do it. Don't wait until you are old and you look back and then you say, I wish I had. Do it now. Do it now. Start early on and do it now. And so all this stuff, you know, all this stuff. And so we just weave those stories and, and yeah. Why no hair? Ah, why no hair? Why no hair? Why no hair? Tell me, why no hair? <laughs> you sh- <laughs> sorry to pick on you. <laughs> I'm not really sorry, but I just say I <laughs> um, Several reasons. No hair because clay hair looks very artificial. To make hair out of clay, look real, it's almost impossible. So I don't want to add a wig or something. I don't (laughs) like that. So clay hair looks artificial and it takes away from that two second moment that I have. You know, it takes away because if we see something artificial because the human mind, we don't look into people's faces, unless you are odd as I am, and I stare into people's faces because I love it. I just love it. But we usually do not do that. We don't look into people's faces. We look at the outline of the head shape more than than in deep in somebody's eyes. And so I'm just not letting you look at the hair. So you have to look into her face. And so there is no chance for you to not look into their faces. And since they are clay, since they are artificial, you can stare all you want and it doesn't matter. They don't say, come on, you know, stop looking at me. You know, it's like you make me feel uncomfortable. So they don't say that they want you to look at them. But that's no, no hair. It has nothing to do with any diseases or anything like that. I just, you know. That, yeah, well, look at their eyes and then you can see. Yeah, that's what I think. So, anything else? I'm admiring that piece on the table because from this angle, from this, this table here, uh, it reminds me of someone I know in Salina. However, it's a male, and it looks just like Dave. Just like Dave. 
Does he have he sagging boobs? <laughs> Oh, this one. Oh, oh that's funny. You know, it's <laughs> you know the funniest thing. I made a piece of myself. You know, when you start out and you do things, and and so I made this piece of myself, and I had it exhibited in a show, and um, people were walking by. And they, oh, this is Martha, this is Martha Ray, this is Martha. I mean, 25 people, yeah, in, in Salina, they told me about Martha. I had never met Martha Ray in my life before, you know. I know, I know her now. And so eventually, like 10 hours later, Martha Ray came by and she said, somebody told me to stop by here and to look at, you know, and she's like, this talk, in my opinion, looks completely different than I do. And, well, we looked at each other and said, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm honored to look like, I mean, that, that, because I think she's a wonderful woman, so. No hair? She, that piece had hair. I gave her character, character right here, kind of like, I show you. Just curious about how many hours, <laughs> how many years you have spent? Yeah, good, that's a good question. Um, if I do nothing but work in the studio, it would probably take about, I, I, you know, I've never done it, like just make one, all the way through, because there's teaching and there's always something. Um, it takes a long time to make them, it takes a long time. The reason why it takes a long time is because I want that complete likeness. And so when you are even an eighth of an inch off, it just isn't right, you know? And so I have to, halfway through or whatever, I take photographs and I, overlaid on the computer the real photograph and the photograph of the piece that I am making and I see if how far am I off you know and so it just this is fiddle 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 little stuff but that you know we are a little crazy as artists I guess and so maybe a couple months two months to just the sculpting and the painting part of it but it takes about a month for the piece to dry. And uh, so, a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. If I just do whatever, just a fantasy person, that's different. That goes fast, but they just don't look real. You know, they look like fantasy. And I want that real, I want that realism. Um, so, I, I just, how do I do it? I have clay, lots of clay. I pound it together, kind of in the shape. I kind of know what I want to do, you know. So I measure the person. I have photographs. I have the real person with me. I sculpt. I, I work. At first, it's kind of rough, and then it becomes finer and finer. Then, um, and I always keep it covered in plastic so that the clay doesn't dry out. And then when I'm done with the sculpting, I uncover it and I let it stiffen up and dry on the outside. It's all solid clay at that time. And then when it's, then I cut it apart and I hollow it out. They're all hollow. They, I could not fire them in the kiln if they would be solid. So then I fire it. If they're big, I have to cut them apart, put them back together, make it all as if nothing ever happened. Then I paint them, and then I add to it. And you know, as time goes by, and I make more and more pieces, I add to it this and that, and I start to add fabric to it, and whatever I, I have in mind. Uh, some of the photographs, you know, that would show I made this big fat woman. I just love her, She's, and I made her into a mermaid. And I gave her, and she, 
I, because people always say, I want hair, I want hair. I didn't want to give her hair, but I gave her a swim cap, <laughs> and I gave her a swimsuit, and what I did is I, I, cut, I asked friends who drink water and beer in cans to keep, give me those beer cans, and I cut them apart, and I opened them up, and so you have a piece of um, aluminum, you know, th kind of sturdy aluminum, and I punched them out, the round discs out with the hole punches, kind of big discs, and I covered the whole swimsuit with those discs so it looks like the scales of a fish. Mm -hmm. And I also did the same thing on the swim, on the cap, and they're like in blues and turquoises and greens and they are shiny and the, and so now she's like this mermaid and she carries a little mermaid with her that has her face when she graduated from high school. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> I had people commission me to make pieces of themselves. Mm -hmm. Has your career always kept you in this part of the country, or have you moved to I am originally from Austria. I came in 1989 to the United States with my family. I used to be a physical therapist in Austria. Then I came here to McPherson, Kansas, because of my husband's work, and found out that my education didn't count anymore. Mm -hmm. So, well, here you go. You know, I had a baby and that kind of stuff. So, family, then we moved away and all my husband's work. And uh, I love to garden. I am like, mm -mm -mm, that's my thing. So, I did another degree as landscape designer and started to work as a landscape designer. I was living in Seattle, in Washington at the time, and it was perfect because, you know, the climate is great and people spend a lot of money on gardens, and so I could do it there. And then one day, we, my husband comes home and said, we are moving back to McPherson. And I was just, what? So we came back in 2000, and I was so upset because I loved it so much what I did in Seattle. And I said, I'm not going to go to work anymore. I'm going to make first in college for my art degree that I wanted to make when I was 18. And I did that and then you know the rest. <laughs> so the shh, shh. Mm -hmm. Is this your last vocation? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. You know, really, I'm, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I hope so. I need a little break. I just need to coast a little bit. I, you know, I started teaching late, really. And, um, and so uh, a lot of energy goes into teaching and to the students. And, you know, when in a small college, the students, we, we kind of are like, in a way, like a family. And so we spend a lot of time with individual students and that's where the energy goes because as an artist and as an art teacher, every student is different and makes different work and you want to, you know, give them what you have and what you know and you just, and then there is not so much energy for what I want to do, so now I'm waiting two more weeks, two more weeks, and then I'll be in the studio, and don't you call me, and you know, <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you very much, Nikki, this has been great. <laughs> thank you.